I want to show you a kit that I purchased a while ago and finally just received. I've already unpacked it as you can see. <coughs> it is an e-bike kit. Let me just get some of these parts out. I already removed all this stuff from it. So there we are, I'm not going to spend 10 hours unpacking them. Now let me show you what came with it. Obviously chain, which I'm not going to open now because I'm sure it's full of grease. Your two handlebar knobs, one obviously cut so that it fits with your controller there. I don't know what diameter that is, I'm guessing they're pretty standard. One of the cables, why you do this to me? Okay, let's move that away. Oh, I'll show you closer. So this twists down. You can see the four LEDs there. I've seen that brand before on eBay. I'll switch. Metal grip, that's good. Here's the speed controller. I mean, this is a the battery cable that came with it, so you can take it out. I don't like the thickness of these leads, so I might replace them with an Anderson connector or something. If you take a look at the serial number here, not the serial number, the part number, it specifies, well the way killer controllers work is, you, know, you have your whatever type there, 48, I don't know if you can see that, stands for 48 volt maximum. 10 is the amperage divided by 10, the maximum amperage, not the continuous amperage. So this is actually a 100 amp max for 10 seconds, 10 seconds isn't 10 there but the 10 is it times it by 10 and you get 100 amps which is the maximum. The last one there on the end means it can be regenerative. I have no idea how to set that up. <laughs> but you can plug it to your PC via a serial cable and reprogram it with the software they provide. And notice it's waterproofed. All the little holes have glue all over them. Even the sides I believe. I'm not going to test it out though. Here is your connections to the motor. That's for your third wiring. There's your power, obviously. This is for your potentiometer, for your speed. This is your hull effect sensor connections. That's just extra power for the um, little, for this device. Hence why this has a little positive lead that plugs straight into the power on the power lead. This is meant to have a green light on it as well. So there should be red and green that they've covered off because I guess it's not that useful. And it also should or could have a reverse switch. They've actually cut that off because if I peel this back, you see those spare cables here. A reverse switch and the green LED was connected to here, but they don't see any use for it. This wasn't taped up. I actually taped this because I don't want to be sure. And yes, these are I think these are heat resistant and abrasion resistant connections. I don't know why they don't have them on these. Or these. I guess because they're small cables. Anyway. Here is our free wheel freely wheels in one direction but not the other 
these little three wheels are actually are usually on the connected straight to the wheel sprocket. So I don't know how long these will hand will hand out. The brand is oh why did I put this on? This wasn't on, I screwed it on so I could knock on it. Uh, I can't be bothered getting that off. I mean, yes. There are good two large radius discs. The thing I really find important is to have a small disc here so you can get a good gear ratio. They normally don't come with gear ratios this small, I think. I really do. This is 24 tooth. I would like it lower, but they don't provide it lower. Here's your other half of the crank. This is actually interesting, these parts. Let me get this into frame. So this is a seven tooth, seven tooth sprocket. Yes, this is a very heavy one. This one here is a six tooth sprocket. So I'm guessing you can put it on and replace it if you want. This here itself is a free wheel in one direction. I don't like how that jiggles up and down. In this direction, it spins my own car, I hope so. Uh, six wheel, six tooth sprocket gives you one less tooth than the seven tooth. And I don't know why, but they gave me another seven tooth sprocket. Uh, if you take a look closely, let's see if I can zoom this in. Yes, we're going to have to focus this. It's got little roller bearings in it. Come on, light, stop failing me. While this one has no roll bearings, it's hard to see because there's no light coming directly down. So, this isn't a freewheel, I'm guessing. So, I won't be using this, because I do want to pedal. So these are, I guess this is just a replacement one for this. This motor... <coughs> it said 240 watts. So 2,400 watts on the website. Don't know if you can read that, but it says 1,500 to 3,000 watts here, and 48 to 72 volts. So this motor should be able to push out more power than they suggested. But that Kelly controller is rated to 100 ma 100 amps maximum at 48 volts, which is like 4,400 watts, I'm not sure. That's just off the top of my head, but um, that is only the temporary burst current. Its continuous current is only um, 35 amps, if I remember correctly. And that means you're, I'm only going to get 1,680 watts of power continuously, which means nowhere near the maximum of this just slightly over the minimal current required to drive this motor. So I have sent them a message about that and I'm going to see what they reply. Hopefully it will run decently. Here's your extension shaft, extension boom, and here's your replacement axle. I've got to take out the original axle from the bike and 
I'm just going to undo this and slide it in and screw this, this section in and put on my gear. And this here is the tensioner. It's only plastic which is disappointing. It seems to... It's been pretty freely, so hopefully it won't wear that bad. It looks like I'm just going to have to attach the spring via this plastic zip lock, which is disappointing, but I guess it works. Uh, usually you've got to do these up pretty tight, because when these motors get flying, that chain centrifugal force will want to pull it out and it will start whipping and vibrating. This metal brace here, I'm guessing, is just to hold this, and this will connect to the frame and stop this thing from sliding down, I guess. Take a look at how thick these cables are. And then, take a look at how thick these cables are. Bit of a difference there. And these are the longest cables. The longer cables should be thicker than the shorter cables. And here's your hull effect sensor. I'm guessing there's other sensors in this, like heat sensor and so on. That's, that's a metal casing, so that's not going to break easily. Real nice thick supports there. Thinner there, but that's just to balance it out. This is going to be taking the stress and weight. This motor is not geared, which means this shaft is directly being driven by the magnets and coils and such and so which means this is going to have to drive you know, a really big cog and also means I'm pretty much going to have to use this smaller cog if I'm ever using this because this smaller cog will have to go to the biggest cog sorry sprocket on the um, sprocket collection on the rear wheel to get any good gear ratio and I'm not going to be able to have a gear ratio that goes down further enough to get enough torque for slow movement. This is purely set up for mainly high speed. I won't be able to change it you know, much lower, which is a downside. But you can always add your gears and such. Or try to find a really, really small sprocket for gear. I want to talk a little bit more about the speed controller. It is a, looks like a legitimate Kelly controller. But just a little bit of information about how uh, brushless motors work compared to a you know, brushed motor. The brushless motor, instead of the motor itself controlling when to fire which coil, to attract the magnets and turn the motor. The actual individual coils can be controlled individually. That's why there's multiple cables instead of just positive and negative. And that's why you have a hull effect sensor. A Kelly controller, any controller, needs to know where your shaft is spinning so it can know which coil to fire to start keep spinning that. That gives you a great degree of control over the motor and it gives you the ability to focus on speed or torque and such. So your Kelly controller here will actually, you can change, as I said, these programs, so you can change what the controller will try to focus on. You can change whether it will try to focus on getting the most torque out of that spinning, which will obviously affect your speed, or you can have the controller focus on getting the most speed out of that shaft, which will obviously affect your torque. There's also a third setting which is balancing between the three. My guess is that it will focus on torque to start off with to get you accelerating, then it will start focusing on speed. Right, thanks for watching and goodbye. And I'll show you later on uh, me trying to put this motor into the bike and I'll show you the power pack and show you how it goes.